So will the prophets, well, think about this. I mean, Stephen, in his proclamation of history, of the history of God's people, remember when he was being persecuted and going to be stoned to death? He said, talking to the, to the Jews there, he said, which, which one of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who had previously announced the coming of the righteous one, whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. Acts 7.52. Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. All right, Matthew 23, 37. They kill the prophets. Now, they're telling the prophets here, don't prophesy. Because if you do, there's, a, there's the implied threat. Yes. What's the implied threat? We want to kill you to death. Stone. So let me ask you a simple question. Why do they kill the prophets? Think about it. Why do they kill the prophets? I'm going to give you a few reasons. Or let me ask you this. Let me ask you a rhetorical. Would they kill the prophets if the prophets came along with a message saying, God wants you rich? <laughs> I don't think so. Would they kill the prophets if they came along saying, well, God's promising you a better job, a fancier car, a nicer house? Would they kill those prophets? I don't think so. Would they kill the pro the prophets who would promise you that God would, no, no, that God must give you thousands of dollars if you just send them a few hundred dollars? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if, if I promise you I'll give you a $10 bill for every dollar bill that you give me, I don't think you'd want to kill me. <laughs> would they kill the prophets who came saying that you would be healed of any disease right now if you would purchase this miracle faith water or this trinket or this bauble? Or, no, they don't kill those. I'm sure you get the idea, all right? You may not like it, but I'm sure you get the idea. No, they did not kill the false prophets, their prophets. Right. They never killed their prophets. prophets. But in Lamentations 2.14, God spoke through Jeremiah and said, Your prophets have seen for you false and foolish visions, and they have not exposed your iniquity so as to restore you from captivity because they have seen for you false and misleading oracles. They did kill God's prophets who came fulfilling the role that the Lord had called them to, exposing the sin, the people's iniquity, so that they could be restored from captivity because sin always makes one captive. Right? Jesus said, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Mm -hmm. Now, discernment of spirit. We all have, those of us who are filled with the spirit of God, we have discernment as a gift of the spirit. And we are commanded, commanded, underlying commanded. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. First John 4, 1. It is God's desire that none would perish, but that all would come to repentance. Second Peter 3, 9. So he sends prophets to call people to repentance so that they can be partakers of the promise. Do you want the promise of God? Always. Say yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, all right. Say yes. <clears throat> and this is the promise of God. This is the promise which he himself made to us. Eternal life. 1 John 2, 25. That's what it says. The promise he made to us is eternal life. The focus of the Lord is eternity. The focus of natural man who cannot accept the things of God because they're spiritually appraised is the here and now, the things of this world. That's what you want if you're walking in the flesh. He can, God can, he will bless you in this life. He will. It just depends on what blesses you. It says in Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. But I promise you, I promise you in the name of the Lord God Almighty, if you truly delight yourself in the Lord, he will become the desire of your heart. The Lord would speak through the prophet Isaiah, who was in the south, and say this, Therefore, my people go into captivity for their lack of knowledge, and their honorable men are famished. Their honorable men are parched with thirst. 
Isaiah 5, 13. They go into captivity. You know, captivity, it's very interesting. The Hebrew is very interesting because what it literally says is they're denuded. They're stripped because of their lack of knowledge. That's because typically back in those days when, when somebody, when one country army conquered another, they would strip them of all their possessions. They would strip them of everything and carry them off into captivity. So that word gola in Hebrew, literally, which means denuded, that's what it meant to be taken into captivity. What God is saying here, too, is there's no solutions in the world. No. Your own strength can't do it. You can't do it. But he will do it when you turn and ask him. Hosea said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. False prophets can only give you false knowledge. Who do you say I am?